you see my slide here, my first slide? So I work half time at Karolinska Institute. Also, I'm coordinator for sustainable development and education at KI. So I have this task uh, since five years back uh, for the committees of um, doctoral education and education at KI. So I have a kind of broad uh, responsibility for sustainable development, implementation and education. Also, I'm uh, directing a course called sustainable development in healthcare that's elective at KI. But then I also work half time clinically with psychotherapy and uh, mindfulness based interventions here, uh, as we mentioned um, briefly. So, so I've really contributed with the psychology part of this um, study. So we have colleagues from uh, Stockholm University who you perhaps know, Alistair Skelton and Kevin uh, Noon. Uh, who have done the, the fancy uh, carbon dioxide uh, emissions calculations here. So if there's any questions about those details, I, I will have to refer them to uh, them. Mats Olsson is at the Department of Clinical Neuroscience at KI. So he's also contributed to the design and analysis here. So please feel free to uh, stop me at any point uh, if there's anything I say that's unclear or any any questions or comments or feedback. Uh, I won't uh, I won't be seeing you raise hands if you do it just like that. So if you raise hand digitally, I'll see it. For some reason, I'm not able to change my slide. Oh, there. Okay, so uh, so the research question here came from um, from basically what we thought already at the beginning of the the COVID crisis, uh, the pandemic, and all the lockdowns was you know all these news media reports like this from the New Delhi, Delhi Indian Gate war memorial and these pictures of like wow it's positively alpine uh, all these extreme climate uh, or extreme environmental effects of the lockdown. I'm hearing some phones. Yes. Possibly to just realize that. Uh, sorry. No worries. Um, hmm. uh, so, so our thought was this was Alistair, uh, I think, initiated this. So he asked if anyone at KI could contribute with a survey study on how, how does this impact quality of life? So, people being in lockdown, and especially in Sweden, since the lockdown was more or less or was voluntary, uh, we thought it's a good opportunity to look at how have people actually um, like adhered to the recommendations uh, and how has that impacted their quality of life? Because as, as you know more than I do, <laughs> uh, most of you that the pandemic has been Basically, uh, in 2020, we can estimate that it has led to um, approximately 7% decrease in greenhouse gas emissions, and that this, this is the largest ever. Um, sorry, I need to move there. Uh, falling greenhouse gas emissions since basically industrialization started. Um, so it's a great opportunity for us to do, despite, the, of course, the negative ex uh, consequences of lockdowns, especially we shouldn't underestimate the negative consequences in countries like uh, India, in low-income countries, middle-income countries, and, and also like myself, I'm studying mental health impacts of uh, the lockdown. So, you know, we shouldn't, of course, uh, disregard those, but perhaps there's some win-wins here. Perhaps there's some lessons that we can learn that we can take uh, forward into a post-pandemic era. So that was the question we asked ourselves for this study. Sorry, can I just ask, because I have, I like seeing like the pictures of people. So I have the pictures of you here, but then it means that I can't see my slides. But can you see my full slide or can you also see my quick? Is it okay? We, we can see your full slide. Looks okay. good. So you don't see your photos basically. Okay. Um, so this was based on, for example, uh, some background literature. Um, there was a group in Japan in 2019 of social scientists and uh, sustainability scientists who did a review on this topic. So looking at how, how much research has been done on this uh, 
quality of life and climate. Um, and they were suggesting that quality of life is, could be a driving force for policy intervention and adaptive planning. Uh, so they've made an assessment framework, but also as a conclusion of their review done in 2019, they, um, they uh, concluded that assessments remain poorly connected with crime, climate related issues. And it's an important gap in research that we need to address for, for policy planning and so on. So that was a good background for our study. So quality of life for those who, uh, just to introduce it briefly, we use something called uh, the WHO quality of life brief uh, questionnaire. Uh, and it assesses various aspects like social, health, economic, so, uh, socioeconomic, uh, environment, like as in lived environment, uh, these kind of aspects and asking people how on a, on a scale in different aspects, how how their well-being is and how, how well they regard their social and environmental and health milieu that they live in or that they find themselves in. So we did this survey um, in uh, during the spring, just when there was the first lockdown and the first wave, and we uh, distributed the survey through, for example, social media and the Stockholm Direct, these paper newspapers that come into uh, to the to mail for free. Uh, to kind of try and widely reach this. And we restricted our study to the Stockholm region uh, due to, uh, well, because of the timing of the lockdowns and was a bit different in different regions. And also because uh, there we could make more clear estimates of the climate impacts of, for example, reduced travel. And there were, as, as far as I understood from Alistair, that it was easier to calculate the CO2 emission reductions when we restricted it to Stockholm region. So here's just first um, some descriptive variables uh, of our participants. This column should be red as well, but I, so if you understand my figure here, these are variables, but these are variables as well. So, so we can see here we had a major uh, <laughs> uh, over-representation over of females in the survey. And this is very common actually for survey studies that are voluntary. So it's not a it's not unusual, but unfortunate, of course, though we did in our analyses adjust for this. So we've also checked that the age ranges here. So we see it's quite a kind of equal distribution of ages in different age ranges. The, the main occupation, most over 50% were working, also 25% were retired, perhaps due to the uh, our recruitment uh, through this paper that maybe uh, there's a more uh, over representation of retired persons reading that paper and highly educated so 77% had gone university or college and here is how they were living so it's quite equally distributed between living alone living with one other person and living with several other persons so including children so, and so on. Civil status, most were single. This, these are kind of representative figures also, so it's not very different from the Stockholm population. I'll just continue here. Also, we asked about their annual income before tax, quite uh, equal distribution between the different uh, income ranges. We also asked about if they had children living at home because we took this into the analysis. So for example, when we asked them about working from home, we also took this into account to see like, okay, so are people with a lot of children at home finding that more difficult? Just, just to know that that's why they're answering. Uh, also asking if they had any dramatic events occurring in the past year, half year, because that would of course also affect their quality of life. So we can't just expect that, you know, the lockdown is the only reason if they have a reduced quality of life. So first here we can just see, so these are the domains of the quality of life breath uh, instrument that we used. It has a physical domain, so physical health, psychological domain, social domain, environmental domain. And we uh, here are the, the means. These don't of course say anything to you as such unless you're acquainted with the instrument, but we, we can compare this uh, to like European level, level data. And so this is the, the overall quality of life of the 
our participants and it's not very different it's very similar so just on that level we can say that uh, they don't have massively worse quality of life uh, per se so what they did first they they responded to the survey and that was a kind of a primer so so to get our uh, survey participants on board of what we need what we mean when we ask uh, how is your quality of life affected by these measures so first they answer the survey on their quality of life and then we have follow up questions and here are some of our this is our results but also it will clarify how we asked so we asked them like uh, According to all of the recommendations by Folkhälsomyndigheten, uh, by the public health agency, we asked uh, for each of them if they had complied, so to hand hygiene, washing your hands often and, and uh, well. Uh, so, so this is, um, if that, sorry, I'm losing my point here, if that, if complying to that, um, restriction affected their quality of life it was neutral it didn't affect it much at all if it affected a bit negatively very negative a little positive or very positive so this is the first level of then we've done some analysis that i'll show you first but this is just to illustrate to you how people answered in terms of these restrictions um, so here we're not looking at how much they uh, they actually did comply at this level yet. That will come next. So hand hygiene was quite neutral. We can probably expect that. Social distancing is a bit more negative than positive, as we can see here. Avoiding shops, also some quite neutral, but a bit more negative. Avoiding restaurants also here. So it's quite visible with the greens and the reds here. So avoiding entertainment, avoiding indoor gyms, uh, I'm getting a package delivery here, very inconvenient. <laughs> I'll just let them ring the doorbell. Um, oh, I see that I've put in the, I'm sorry, I've put in the wrong slide here. I'll just, um, that was a mistake. You can see my, can you still see my, um, uh my screen or are you just seeing my powerpoint and we see your powerpoint presentation you're okay. Okay. working so sure, sort of... because i i saw that i accidentally had um had shared had pasted in because i had pasted in this bit two times but now okay so here comes continued i'll switch back to my powerpoint soon so then we have the next uh, set of questions so avoiding work travel in stockholm quite neutral avoiding work travel in sweden quite neutral Avoiding work, travel abroad, broad, very neutral. Then we when we look at private travel, that's more negative. So here it's quite clear that it's private travel. Avoiding private travel is experienced as having a negative impact on quality of life uh, among our participants, while avoiding work travel is uh, experienced as pretty much neutral. So now I'll just go back to my um, PowerPoint here. There. Okay, uh, so, um, so here is the more kind of analysis of this. So here comes the, the level of CO2 emissions per person per year, kilograms CO2 emissions per person per year for each of the restrictions. So this is the calculations that Kevin and Alistair have done. So, um, so here they, so here we're plotting the save and in emissions from each uh, compliance measure or each recommendation and so we have different levels of compliance so they were all also they we also asked them to what level have you complied um so the lowest number here is uh, well some had not complied at all so then we didn't take them into analysis some had complied a little some uh, moderate and some fully so that's the different numbers here so then uh, our colleagues have been able to estimate the, the savings in CO2 uh, emissions. So then we plotted that against, um, so here you, you'll recognize the five levels that I had uh, in the previous slide. So how did this affect your quality of life? Neutral, 
a little positive, strongly positive, a little negative, strongly ne negative with the same um, color codes here. So yellow is neutral, green is positive, red negative. Is, yes, someone's raising their hand, Martin. Yeah, a short question. Maybe you said it uh, previously, but was during which time did you ask them these questions? And is it relative to some average or um, relative to what the person did before? So what, what's your sort of, what do you compare against? So we collected this data during the first lockdown in uh, last spring, 2020 spring, uh, just so we got out the survey a couple of weeks be before the lockdown measures were lifted before the summer uh, in May. And, uh, and yeah, we've asked them, we formulated the questions uh, in terms of, we don't have a, like a, a real assessment of the change, but we've asked them, how much have you changed your behavior? How much have you? So that's that was embedded in the question. So yeah, of course, the stronger design would have been to have assessed the levels before the lockdown and during, but this was done ad hoc during the lockdown. So we don't have a real measure, but we, we do have figures uh, on what the kind of usual emissions are uh, in terms of travel, et cetera. So that's, that's the good thing that allowed us to uh, calculate this nevertheless. So here we can see, so basically our premise or our, our, what we were looking for was so possible win-wins or at least not win-lose uh, scenarios. So which of these lockdown measures could, uh, were more or less neutral at least, or maybe positive in some cases, we're not seeing any positive ones here on the group level, but, but we do see, for example, avoiding shops. And here we did take into account, we also asked them, have you shopped online instead to actually really see have they um have they actually avoided purchasing so that's the really the question here this is a bit misleading avoiding shops so here we see that avoiding shops a little bit or moderately is quite neutral and then okay when we go on the total avoid and that that's negative but still this moderate avoiding purchasing is is not affecting that much. And the same with restaurants, all levels actually fall within this neutral yellow zone here. Um, entertainment, this is, uh, this is not, I mean, it's only the very low avoidance that, and also the savings are not very big here. So that didn't fall out in our kind of conclusions as a, but these two did. Uh, and th th these ones, of course, avoiding indoor gyms, avoiding private travel in Stockholm, they quite clearly start falling on the red region. So avoiding private travel in Sweden and avoiding pri <clears throat> private travel abroad also end up on the red region. So we're not, those are probably not the first win-win uh, situations. Um, but then here we see again, avoiding work travel in Stockholm. And actually there it's also, the more one complies to that, the more positive or the more neutral uh, it is. So that, that could definitely be a possible target. Avoiding work travel in Sweden is falling over that line. So it's more on the red side, but avoiding work travel abroad here we see, especially those who totally, um, comply to that, that they, they're they neutral. So that's really a big, big reduction in annual CO2 uh, emissions. So basically this led us to our uh, conclusions here. And there's a lot of fancy calculations behind this, which I <laughs> won't go into uh, because I don't, I'm not an expert in all of it, but our key findings from this study. And this is uh, by the way, Toya for my two minutes <laughs> summary. Also, if you want to. So the key findings from this study, looking at lockdown measures with uh, at least neutral impact on quality of life in the Stockholm region during the COVID crisis. Um, first of all, the background to the study was that lockdown measures in response to the new COVID virus have caused the largest ever fall of annual greenhouse gas emissions. And interestingly, they're uh, the estimates for 2020 are more or less in line with what would be required to meet the 1.5 degrees cent uh, Celsius target. So we took this opportunity to assess if there are any possible win, win regions in Sweden where the lockdown measures were implemented on a more or less voluntary basis. So there were no uh, law enforced lockdown measures. So it's a good kind of natural environment to study this. 
So uh, approximately 800 survey participants from the Stockholm region responded to the survey and our key findings are that avoiding work travel, purchasing, so shopping in both online and shops, and avoiding restaurants are associated with larger re reductions in emissions and CO2 emissions per person per year and smaller impacts on quality of life. So, so those are possible win-win scenarios that don't have at least a negative impact on quality of life. So these measures are promising targets for sustaining greenhouse, greenhouse gas emission reductions at post lockdown and perhaps could be targets for future policies. So thank you.